Hello guys, welcome back to Ranjit Deyar Pathology once again. I am Dr. Ranjit. Here we are going to discuss one more classical gross potter which can come in your MBBS practicals. I am going to show you two cases. Both of them are classical case of gangrene. You, it might, you might have seen a, either a foot in the form of jar specimen or you might have seen a gangrene of intestine, right? So we'll discuss quickly, like next five minutes. It's just for one thing and let's uh, see if you can uh, answer the follow-up query, queries which I ask you. Last time when I asked a query, you guys didn't answer the question. I want you guys to actively involve and comment and let's diagnose and learn more things together, right? As usual, starting. So this is a specimen of a foot right with all the toes and it's been uh, most likely a process of an amputation process right so you can see kind of an ulcerated area over the skin i'm not exactly sure what's happened this is due to an uh, processing uh, post processing thing or a processing thing there are few areas of blackish discoloration i'm not sure about what this is exactly because gangrene will not happen in patches right and then if you look at toes i'll just zoom in this part and zoom into this part you can see that the tip of the toe here wherever you're seeing this this part is completely discolored and completely black in color compared to the proximal part of the great toe which is not discolored it's having a, a kind of a whitish or up, uh, looking a, a, like a normal toe right so this part is what i would want to think is a gangrene of foot so how do i call it a gangrene of foot first the discoloration Gangrene will generally happen in an end artery supply, right? The reason why I was uh, pretty not convinced to call these black spots as gangrene is there's no end artery in the dorsum of the foot. I won't have an end artery there, so it might be a processing related error, right? but definitely a tip of the toe can definitely have a end artery and it's possible if the end artery is occluded, there's no blood supply and it results in gangrene. So first thing, the definition of gangrene. Gangrene is nothing but a gross term for an infarcted tissue which is turned black to greenish black in color. The color discoloration is due to the bacterial proliferation which is happening in gangrene, right? Second question which will come for you is, is it a dry gangrene or a wet gangrene, right? That also is very important for you, dry versus wet. The main difference between dry and wet is, dry gangrene there is no suppuration. When I say suppuration, it's pus formation, there's no exact pus formation. Wet gangrene, it's a gangrene with suppuration. If it's suppurated, if it's forming and oozing pus, I call it a wet gangrene. I would prefer this to be a dry gangrene for the only reason, uh, you can see a clear line of demarcation, right? If I can draw somewhat, there's a clear line of demarcation, right? There's a black area below and a normal tissue above. This clear area of demarcation can be appreciated only in a dry gangrene and not in a wet gangrene, right? And there are other differentiating points. This is for differentiation, right? How do I differentiate dry versus wet gangrene? First, like I said, a clear area of demarcation. Rest of them, I would want a live specimen to dif differentiate. One, I can see a oozing pus. Obviously, in a formalin fixed tissue, it's been stored for years together. I will not be able to see a pus, right? In a real live specimen, if it's oozing pus, I'll call it a wet gangrene. If it's not oozing pus, I'll call it dry gangrene, right? Next, the texture. If it's oozing pus, it, though it's not flowing outside, if it's inside, it'll be soggy, right? If you touch a wet gangrene, it'll generally be a little bit soggy compared to a dry gangrene, which will be dry. As the name says, it'll be dry, right? There are three points of differences in gross. One, the line of demarcation. Second, the consistency feeling. If it's soft, soggy, I think of a wet. Dry and hard, I think of a dry gangrene. And visibly, if there's pus points oozing, I think of a dry. And there's no pus points oozing, I, uh, uh, I think of a wet. And there's no pus point oozing, I think of a dry gangrene, right? These are three pointers which you wanted to think of dry gangrene, right? So now, if they ask you, what could be the etiology of this dry gangrene? There are multiple etiologies. The primary thing, like I said, a vascular supply has been occluded, right? One of the commonest etiologies is atherosclerosis, right? Other commonest etiology is your thromboangiitis obliterans. Never miss this in the answer. Thromboangiitis obliterans, by default, the smoking-related peripheral vascular disease is one of the important cause of toe gangrene. Atherosclerosis can also cause toe gangrene by default, right? So these are two common pathogens which can be involved in the formation of gangrene, right? Just one more uh, uh, image. This was image shared by one of the students. Okay, that's a beautiful image here. Look at that. That's a gangrene of intestine, right? So this is how a gangrene of intestine looks like. Maybe uh, this entire bowel of intestine is completely gangrenous. I just want you guys to comment on one answer alone. Give me at least one disease where we will see gangrene of intestine. Because thromboangiitis obliterans might not cause this. 
atherosclerosis may may not but this one disease i'm looking for for you guys to comment on where do you see the gangrene of intestine right same description same thing dry wet same differentiation right so see you soon in the next video if you're here for the first time i'm dr anjit share this video to your loved ones who's preparing for the second year of mbbs let's dissect each and every gross measurements together bye bye